Hello everybody, Super Baby Mario here. Welcome back to Let's Play Crash Bandicoot 2. In the last part, we did the first three stages, got five gems, as well as the first three crystals, and in this part we're going to the pits, which is the first stage in the game that only has one gem. Which is really odd. <laughs> At least I think so, but whatever. From what I can remember, this is actually this is also the first one that has a branching path. Unless you really want to, unless you want to count the blue gem path from Hang Eight, or the red gem, the path to get the red gem from freaking Snowgo, or the path to get all the boxes from Turtle Woods. I never mind. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's, that is, I've made that very clear in every one of my videos. So let's just grab our checkpoint, break some boxes, get invincibility, and kill some birds, and turtles with buzzsaws on their backs. Why is that even a thing? So normally when you have, when you don't have invincibility, you have to kill the buzzsaw turtles by, uh hitting them, or er, by sliding into them, like this. That was fun. Also, it would it would appear that I have chosen the wrong path. Hey. Apparently you can't spin those vultures, who knew? Um, gonna go backwards now, just for a little bit. Gonna try and backtrack to the, the fork in the road, preferably without getting myself killed. Well, I've made it to the checkpoint. I think that's about the halfway mark. <laughs> okay, that was a bit close for my for my liking. Ah! Took my hand off the controller for one second. <laughs> and look what it, look what that got me. Editing. There we go. We've made it. <laughs> of course, that was the last pit. Blarg. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, now that we have no Aku Akus, we have to be slightly more careful of where we jump. And, you know, walk and stuff. Luckily, there's a checkpoint right here, so I don't have to do all that backwards crap again. Excuse me! I hit the jump button. Come on now, game. Be, be nice to me. I've only been. This is only the second episode. You're not supposed to be. You're not supposed to start killing me until at least like episode five, or something arbitrary like that. Anyways, here's the crystal. I still have no idea why these turtles have buzz saws on their back. And wait, what the crap? Where was the? Where was the exclamation point box? Well, I'm gonna have to look for that later. And by later, I probably mean fairly soon. But luckily, that's a thing that is possible. Well, here's our, our good friend, the bonus stage. As well as this box which can only be broken by be belly flopping on it. Boing. Boing. Boop! Oh, this one is mean. Hit the do! This is like the first bonus stage that actually requires you to think about things in order to get the bo in order to get all the boxes. But, it's not too bad. I'm pretty sure those were the only ones. I, I'm pretty sure those were the only ones. So now it's just these last two. Boing! 23 sounds right for the amount of the boxes that are in here. And we got a bunch of lives to make up for the far too many that were lost trying to go backwards through a stage. Goodbye, rats. I 
I don't know why, but this controller is kind of starting to bug me. The D-pad on it is fairly squeaky. And, uh, hey, guess what? I passed the, the exclamation point box. So I'm gonna have to go back for that. Ah, fuck! Wait, what? What the crap? Did they just activate randomly? I... I must be missing something here, but I'm... I don't think I hit any exclamation point boxes. Whatever, going back to the end of the stage, I guess. There's our gem. Alright, number two is now... Number two? Where did I get that from? <laughs> this is gem number six, and this is stage number four! That... <sighs> I don't make... I don't even know what I'm saying. Let, let's just ignore that and move on to Crash Dash. Alright. Oh. Love the music here, too. Yeah, sh get get out of here, Boulder. We are we are apparently becoming Indiana Bandicoot, or something along those lines. I should say we're becoming Indi Indiana Bandicoot again. The first game also had stages like this. Like the oh so creatively named Boulders and Boulder Dash, which was slightly better, I guess. And somehow this one does not fall through that hole in the ground. But whatever. Yay for Naughty Dog logic. It does fall through this one, though, which is very good. I don't know how it keeps rolling on ground that doesn't exist, but whatever. We'll, we'll just ignore that and go on to this bonus stage here. Which, this looks almost exactly like the background used in pretty much every bonus stage in Crash 1. Uh, excuse me! I wasn't close enough to get hit by that. I call shenanigans. Let's try that again. Oh, come on now. Crash, don't hit the Wumpa Fruit. You want to eat the Wumpa Fruit? <laughs> that was... That was stellar. There we go. See, game? You can be nice to me sometimes. Why, why am I so bad at this game? Just gotta be patient here. And you also need to know how to count. How did I get the bottom one from the other one? Aside from black magic. Eight, nine, ten, boop! Yay! I actually didn't completely screw up. Only mostly. Whee! Whee! Glad there's a checkpoint after every boulder. That may seem like overkill, but only because it is. And it's somewhat welcome overkill in my mind. Fall down the hole. Oh, so many boxes that I can't break. And I am inside the boulder. Cool. <laughs> okay, there we go. That should be all the boxes. Okay, we're, we're good. You know, I had thought I left my life of failure behind me after I finished the first game. 
but I guess since I'm doing so well in Spyro 2, I have to I have to be screwing up somewhere, I guess. That, that I guess that's what the logic is here. What's up, Cortex? What you got? Listen up. We are not without enemies. Some of them you may even recognize. Although they cannot harm you inside this warp room, they can attack you on your way to the next one. To get to the next warp room, use the platform that appears in the center of the room. Good luck. So yeah, basically he's implying that Brio has uh, sent a particularly nasty villain against us. And, uh, once again, you may recognize him. Hey there, ripper -roo. When did you become an intellectual? A clinically insane intellectual. So, much like the last fight against him, we, uh, use explosives to our advantage. This time, however, it's explosives that he lays himself himselves? <laughs> that is not correct in any sort of way. But yeah, he lays a bunch of TNT and a bunch of nitros, and then you basically just have to watch as he blows himself up. And then you hit him. After he's finished blowing himself up, obviously. Because for some reason he has to blow himself up twice for it to count. Once with TNT and once with nitrous. Oh God, where, where, where do, where do you go? Apparently here-ish will work. Not that way! Not that way! Not that way! Okay, that was a bit too close for comfort. Boop. And doink. Yay! And Crash Dance, and this time you can't skip it with Triangle, because it's at the end of a boss fight, I guess. Woo! So after he is unceremoniously tossed out of Snowbiz, we, uh, get to talk to him again. <laughs> I see that Ripper Roo failed to prove much of a challenge yet again. But back to business. There are crystals to be gathered. Twenty to be exact. The planets will align shortly, all thirteen of them. And this will create a power great enough to rip the Earth apart. Properly utilized, however, the crystals can absorb and contain the energy. Cash, is that you? I've been looking everywhere. I don't have much time to tell you this. You have to be careful. Trusting Cortex seems a little unwise. Crash, I can't keep the data pack open for Crash, you need to... Trusting Cortex seems unwise? Who would have guessed that? Gasp! Anyways, let's go into Snowbiz. Probably one of my favorite stage names in the game, by the way. And I don't recall this being a particularly difficult stage, eh. But, uh, we, we will see. Boing. Oh god, I boinged on the wrong one, but I still got stuff, so we're good. Hello, penguins. How are you today? Hey, penguin! Please don't try to murder me. I will try and do my best to not murder any of the any of the penguins this time. Well, now we have murderous hedgehogs. Hi. I believe when they uh, have their spikes up like that, you can't hurt them. But I could be wrong on that. And as you saw, we have a red gem path. Which, uh, obviously we can't take right now because we do not yet have the red gem. Because it was oh so jerkishly hidden from us, and how did I, why did I not slide there? Uh, 
Excuse me, seal! Your head is not supposed to get in my way. There we go. I don't even know why I'm trying to collect the boxes because we can't get the, uh, we can't get all of them without access to the red gem path. But whatever, let's, we'll, we'll do it anyway, because I can. Might as well show where all the rest of them are so I don't have to do that again later. Not sure why that's even, why this, uh, that fifth one is even there. I guess trying to show you that you can jump higher by crouching or sliding, except you have to do that to, to progress over to there anyway. Whee! Ah! <laughs> I almost, I almost made a boo-boo. Thankfully, I did not. Yay, life. I like lives. They are good. Now, you want to be careful here with uh, box formations like that, because, uh, once again, the game developers are not above putting TNT in the middle of those. Oh Ow. Excuse me, Rolling Stone. I, did not, I do not appreciate your reappearance. And, uh, as we can see, we are still missing a shitload of boxes. Like, we got barely half of them. Good lord. So, we'll have to come back here when we get the red gem. But, that'll be, uh, that'll have to wait until next time. So, next time on Crash Bandicoot 2, we're going to be going into Air Crash. Yeah! So thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time. Take care, everybody.